Good morning. I can't believe it is week 14 already. The time has gone by so quickly. I've been so grateful for all the amazing businesses in our community who have really come together, who have stood the test of time, who have endured so many challenges. We've been absolutely, um, I've been absolutely grateful for the YXH business support group and the fact that we can come together each week. I know there's so many businesses who are reopening, relaunching. It's a lot of people are getting back into their routines. And so I had uh, figured that this would be our last weekly wrap up before the summer, just because, you know, a lot of people are, are going to be starting holidays and vacations. I know I'm going away next week. Um, and and as businesses are reopening, I know it's become even busier than before and we don't have as much uh, free time to, to engage virtually as much as we did before. And so we'll have to look at other ways that we can connect and engage. I see three people on so far. Good morning, Sandra. And we weren't sure if we were going to do the weekly wrap up today. And I thought, well, we didn't really, you know, we didn't really conclude last week and let people know that it would be our last one. And I didn't want to end on week 13. So I figured uh, this is a good opportunity to, to wrap things up and conclude before the summer. So for those who end up watching later on today, I encourage you to type into the comments, uh, you know, over the last 14 weeks, what has been the key thing that stood out for you? What has been perhaps something uh, that's been the, the key highlight or, or one of the, the key learnings or aha moments that you've had over the last 14 weeks? Um, what, what stood out for you as, as maybe one of the most challenging times, but also uh, perhaps one of one of the most opportunistic times or, or times when you know it, you were overjoyed with with where things are going and or where you're at or what you've learned or you know <laughs> that where what was that moment where you took that big sigh of relief knowing that we were coming out of this I know for this past week, we've been busy researching virtual event options and looking at different uh, programs and new technologies, which has been really exciting. We had a webinar with uh, CMHC and the Alberta Chambers of Commerce around the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program. And that is now on our website. So if people didn't have an opportunity to check that out, you can go back and take a look. I know that Apex has some exciting things coming up in the days ahead, so I'm looking forward to uh, to those initiatives as they roll out. And Sandra, you've been so passionate uh, for this community and and the opportunities that we have. And you're you're an amazing individual, and and you're going to to lead this community moving forward in as it pertains particularly to technology and innovation. So that's very exciting. Uh, there's lots of things happening in the background. Good morning, Pat. Um, and and certainly we we stay vigilant and we stay very busy working on behalf of our business community, all of our business support organizations. Um, we also this week had a national agriculture working group meeting. We hosted our virtual town hall, which was a new experience. Uh, I certainly always enjoy connecting with our members each week. I know Crystal Metz was a, a you know, regular in these Friday Friday morning groups, and and so I had the opportunity to catch up with her via Zoom this week. Uh, we had our board meeting, an urban development industry meeting, and we've been talking lots about our strategic plans as an organization, and certainly within our community, 
how our community is going to grow and develop moving forward. And of course that comes into play with the municipal development plan and looking at uh, strategies of how we can entice businesses to invest and grow in our community moving forward. So it's a very exciting time, I think, for our community because there is a lot going on and you're going to see, you know, a lot of, of new initiatives as a result, I think, of COVID because this pandemic has truly accelerated a lot of strategies that um, many of us have been thinking about and it, it just made us um, implement those a lot sooner than than we normally would have in the current environment. But in terms of some of the stuff that came out this week, of course, the applications for the expanded Canada emergency business account are available starting today. So they had expanded the eligibility rules so that SEBA applicants with payrolls lower than $20,000 could apply. And you still do need a business operating account at a participating financial institution and a CRA business number and that 2018-2019 tax return. So uh, you can, if you haven't been eligible or you haven't yet taken a look at that program, make sure you do. I know the City of Medicine Hat Business Innovation Grant also expanded their criteria. So again, uh, a great program, good opportunity to take a look and get some of those costs covered for your PPE and some of the some of the modifications that you've had to do to your business. So grants are now between five hundred to fifteen thousand. So it was one thousand. And I know previously it, the criteria was not less than two FTEs as of March 1st. And there is an exception now, of course, if you're an owner operator of a retail storefront. Professional services are also now eligible. So that was a change. So again, as we saw with a lot of the provincial federal programs, these programs do change and it's, it's beneficial to our business community that our governments are willing to adjust and adapt the programs to make sure that they're meeting those intended outcomes. So make sure you thank you so much, Pat, for posting uh, the link within the, com uh, within the comments. So that's there. And again, you can use that funding for things that have been a requirement under, you know, the the new health guidelines. And so whether that's equipment, tools, devices, signage that you've had to purchase, um, make sure you're taking a look at all of the eligibility um, or all of the qualified uh, purchases. And of course, if you have purchased items already, if you've made those purchases between March 15th and June 1st, you can be eligible up to 70% of cost purchase based on your receipts. So don't think that this is just, you know, a forward looking grant for, for new costs. If you have incurred costs, make sure you take a look at that program. Um, and then as well for any costs after June 1st, it's going to be based on quotes received. So you need to have at least one local quote because we do want to support our local businesses or two quotes if services are being contracted outside of Medicine Hat. And of course that would need to be supported by receipts once uh, the, the work is completed. Um, there's certainly more protection for commercial tenants that came into play this week. So Bill 23 was introduced in the provincial legislature. And of course, that's going to protect uh, commercial tenants from being evicted. The survey for the Kennedy Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program is still open if you have feedback on that. And I do encourage people to, to watch that webinar that we did on Monday with regards to the SECRA program, just so you can get a little bit more insight. One of the questions I did ask was, you know, little tips that tenants could use to explain the benefit to their property owner if, if there has been a challenge entering into those rent forgiveness agreements. So again, it's a it's a pretty straightforward application process. Others have gone through it and said it was was quite easy uh, to to apply. So make sure you're utilizing the programs that are available. I can't stress that enough. Um, I know with Mayor uh, Clugston, he said success would be based on the fact that the programs are, are fully subscribed and making sure that the businesses that need it have access to it and are, are applying and, and getting the support that they need. 
Um, the Prime Minister this week announced that the Kennedy Emergency Response Benefit would be extended up to a total of 24 weeks. So that modification has been made. And um, there has been a bill introduced again into the provincial legislature, it's Bill 24, and it's proposing 15 or amendments to 15 acts across seven ministries. Now that the state of public health emergency has ended, they just want to ensure that there's a few things that are still uh, extended or, or uh, addressed during this time and, and through the summer because we're not out of, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. So they've extended uh, to August 2021 the unpaid job protected leave specific to COVID-19. So that's allowing employees to take leave to care for a child or to care for somebody who is ill or self-isolating due to COVID. Uh, they're providing updated guidance for operating child care programs. So they are increasing the maximum cohort cohort group size from 10 to 30. Uh, that's both obviously staff and children together. And then they're helping operators reopen and getting access to obviously helping businesses reopen by ensuring that parents have access to childcare as they're returning to work. They're also allowing for remote signing and witnessing of estate and care documents. I know that's been a, a challenge and extending the maximum time for temporary layoffs related to COVID-19 from 120 days to 180 days. So there's an additional 60 days um, and that change would come into force upon first reading. Extending the deadline for the public release of Alberta's annual report and financial statements to August 31st. And there's some additional um, amendments that have been made uh, in relation to health orders and the Chief Medical Officer of Health. So you can find all of that in our daily update uh, as of yesterday. There's also some new information on supply chains. We've been involved in a national supply chain uh, working group to just manage and, and monitor what's happening on uh, more of a global scale. And a lot of people I don't think realize what supply chain really means. I mean, if, if you are sending a product somewhere you're part of a supply chain if if you're in receipt of a product if you you know if you're needing to get supplies whether as a customer or a business you, you're all we're all part of this supply chain and ensuring you know products get to 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 market and get to the end end user so um there is a tool that's been introduced it's a supply chain workforce marketplace and so it's open source to ensure the visibility to the available supply chain talent across the country and to help match available talent with opportunities. So if you're even just curious about that, take a look at that. Um, as well, the Retail Council of Canada have stated, you know, a number of times throughout these that they have some fantastic resources for retailers. And so they have now uh, six essentials to achieve lasting recovery in retail and so that's a new document that they've put out there um, as well the community foundation of southeast alberta a fantastic organization in our community who has been uh, able to to bring together funds for our region and so they were allocated three hundred and sixty three thousand dollars from canada's emergency community support fund to support charities in need who are serving vulnerable populations so there's different types of projects that are eligible for funding for that and with a minimum ask of forty thousand dollars and so registered char charities can apply through the community foundation for the various projects projects and the application process is available now. We're actually going to be posting this in our daily update today. In addition, they have the COVID-19 response fund, which is a local fund that's been um, uh, generated through the, the generous contributions of our donors here, volunteers. Of course, the City of Medicine Hat had contributed to that fund and then there was that dollar for dollar matching in addition to the proceeds that uh, we were able to garner from our community from the stay at home gala. So the applications uh, process for that fund are now open and they're going to be reviewed on a weekly basis over the coming months. 
just to ensure that funds can be distributed to agencies as soon as possible. So make sure again that you go to the Community Foundation of Southeast Alberta for that information and to apply. Uh, within the agriculture, agri-food business, there's now a surplus food rescue program, which is a really cool program. Uh, there's additional assistance to help overnight camps. So there's a lot of these businesses that we don't think, you know, they may not be top of mind for us right now, but there's a lot of businesses, particularly in the tourism hospitality business where it's very seasonal, where they don't have an opportunity to reopen or recover right now. And so, you know, supports for our tourism hospitality industry is so important. Um, if you're thinking of, of doing anything within the motor vehicle uh, system online, that's going to be down from June 19th to the 22nd, just to update their system. And one of the resource tools that I found really cool, and maybe a lot of you have already seen it, but it's the relaunch status map. So this is different than the geospatial map. I've been taking a look at that one over the weeks, but the relaunch status map actually shows the level of risk in regions and information about local health measures. It shows the number of active cases, the number of recovered cases. And so you can, it's, I actually like this map better than the geospatial map. It's, it's quite similar, but then it also is color coded with um, regions that are under watch. Um, so again, if there's, you know, more than 10 cases in a region, they go into um, a, a watch under Alberta Public Health. So if you're curious about that, that resource is, is available and is a pretty neat little tool if you're wanting to get a quick snapshot of what's going on in our province. Uh, of course, a lot of us are excited that camping is going to resume and we can get outside and enjoy our beautiful, um, you know, our within our region, all the beautiful scenery and, and parks and and rivers that we have here and across the province. And, and I know I'm looking forward to getting up to the mountains. That's kind of my my escape in the summer is getting up to the mountains and and walking through and up to the waterfalls and, and doing some of those big hikes up there. So I'm quite looking forward to that. Of course, make sure that you're checking out the parks website. So whatever that, whether that's the Parks Canada website or the Alberta Parks website, making sure it's so important now <laughs> more than ever to make sure that you're planning before you go, making sure you're taking a look at the different municipalities that you're going to be visiting, making sure that you're aware of what some of the protocols are, what's going to be open, what's not. Um, I think we, you know, I'm a planner, but I think even more now, we have to be diligent in terms of checking that information before we do travel. Of course, the Canada land border is also closed for another 30 days, so that's extending to July 21st. So if you were hoping to get across the border early in July for, for some summer holidays, um, that is still going to be closed. I know there's lots of people from here that go down to, to Whitefish, um, so you may have to delay your plans just a little bit more. Uh, there's more provincial historic sites reopening. So again, this is one of those things where if you're planning your summer holidays or if you're going out and you wanna stop into some of these iconic locations, just make, make sure that you are checking before you do travel to see whether or not those facilities are open. Uh, the Government of Canada announced that they're going to be launching a nationwide mobile app for that contact tracing. And so that's going to be available and certainly we had the app within Alberta. It's one of those things that it only works as well as the number of people who, who download that so that we can make sure that we're tracking those cases. It is voluntary and, and the national one is going to be voluntary as well. A uh, few things that are happening locally, of course, we've talked a lot about uh, the MDP, the Municipal Development Plan, so I encourage you, if you haven't yet, check that out. The deadline for survey responses is coming up on June 26th. Uh, they have videos, they have the full MDP plan. If you haven't checked out what they're proposing for the Waterfront District, I highly encourage you to take a look at that. It's very exciting for our community when you take a look at, at some of what uh, we're planning as we grow within this within the city and, and our municipality. 
Uh, if you're a frequent uh, driver in the downtown, you'll want to make sure that you know that the speed limit is being lowered to 40 kilometers an hour. Um, and you'll also want to be aware that Finley Bridge is having some resurfacing project or their resurfacing project will begin on June 24th. Uh, of course, the city is working diligently on trying to get their facilities open. And as we talked about last week, of course, the spray parks, the Esplanade, Medelta. I am so looking forward to getting back to those facilities and enjoying what our amazing community has to offer. Um, I still haven't seen Teresa's exhibit in the Esplanade. I've, I've seen kind of a little bit of a virtual tour online and a little sneak peek. So I'm looking forward to seeing her work because I'm definitely a fan. So as you head into the weekend, I keep this short and sweet uh, as our last one. And I know a lot of people have uh, their work to get to and and it's life looks a little bit different once again for, for each of us. But make sure you, know, you visit the farmer's market. They kicked off last weekend. And uh, so they're going to be open this weekend. Make sure you book your time at the Esplanade. So again, with a lot of these facilities, you do have to book online and make sure that uh, you have that time slot booked. The food truck frenzy is kicking off uh, this weekend in Kincooley Park. So they're going to be there from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock on Sunday. And so if you haven't been to food truck uh, festival or food truck frenzy I highly encourage you we have some amazing food trucks so uh, I know that cheesy business is gonna be there Pooties poutine Sammy's curry in a hurry Kona ice gypsy girl and fresh squeezed lemon lemonade are on the docket for Father's Day so if you don't have any plans for Father's Day yet you can head over there Baba Klux which is the new restaurant in Redcliffe has their grand opening on Saturday at two o'clock so you can join me over there I have been looking forward to to trying uh, the the homemade pierogies and cabbage rolls and having some of that amazing uh, you know, authentic Ukrainian food that uh, some of us I know quite quite enjoy, but we don't get often enough. And of course, there's some reopenings that are going to be happening. I'm looking forward to all of these businesses opening their new locations. So we we had a sneak peek that Redcliffe Bakery is opening a location in Medicine Hat. So I'm looking forward to that. There's that new pop up patio pub that's going to be opening on Third Street, the yard. And there's lots of lots of things coming up. So just make sure that you're staying in touch and staying in tune with things that are going on. We'll continue to do our daily updates on our blog. So if you're curious on the day's news, you can always get up in the morning and uh, take a look through the, the daily update at medicinehatchamber.com and see what, what occurred in the day before and still get your daily news. Um, our news outlets have been absolutely fantastic in profiling some of the stories and certainly uh, there's lots of information that we can find online. So I have enjoyed connecting with each of you over the last uh, 14 weeks. I can't believe it's been 14 weeks and it's been so such a pleasure to, to have coffee and to connect and to um, just engage with each of you. I know it's you know, certainly odd for me on this side when I'm just staring at my computer, but it's been a joy to be able to to see, you know, the little eyes and know how many people are on the call each morning. And certainly, I appreciate the the comments that each of you um, share each morning. And Bella, I see you're there, so I'm just curious. I've been watching your Facebook page. I'm curious when you're going to open. So if if you can post because you're going to be one of the first uh, restaurants or when you open, I want to be one of your first customers back in because I've certainly missed your amazing uh, food that you have. So please engage, connect. Um, we'll have to figure out maybe a, a live coffee that we can we can have in person with the core group of people that have been on every Friday morning. So thank you so much for your engagement and for your continued support. And it's been an absolute pleasure and I look forward to connecting with each of you in person soon in the coming uh, days and weeks and months ahead. So take care and have an amazing weekend ahead. Make sure you thank all those fathers in your lives and uh, celebrate with them as well. Take care.